on Sunday before Thanksgiving, I always think it's important to honor the turkey. <laughs> you know, we have to give thanks for the turkey. And I have this, one of my favorite poems about the turkey, from the turkey's point of view. <laughs> when I was a young turkey, new to the coop, my big brother Tom took me out on the stoop. Then he sat me down and he spoke real slow. And he told me there was something that I had to know. <laughs> his look and his tone I will always remember when he told me of the horrors of Black November. <laughs> Come around August, now listen to me. Each day you'll get six meals instead of just three. And soon you'll be thick where once you were thin and you'll grow a big rubbery thing under your chin. And then one morning when you're warm in your bed, in will burst the farmer's wife and she'll hack off your head. <laughs> then she'll pluck out all your feathers so you're bald and pink and scoop out all your insides and leave you lying in the sink. And then comes the worst part. He said, not bluffing. She'll spread your cheeks and pack your rear with stuffing. <laughs> well, the rest of the words were too grim to repeat. As I sat on the stoop like a winged piece of meat, I decided on the spot that to avoid being cooked, I'd have to lay low and remain overlooked. I began a new diet of nuts and granola, high roughage salads, juice, and diet cola. And as they ate pastries, chocolates, and crepes, I stayed in my room doing my fitness tapes. <laughs> I maintained my weight of two pounds and a half and tried not to notice when the bigger birds laughed. But was I who was laughing under my breath as they chomped and they chewed ever closer to death. <laughs> and sure enough, when Black November rolled around, I was the last turkey left in the entire compound. So now I'm a pet in the farmer's wife's lap. I haven't to worry, so I eat and I nap. She held me today while sewing, sewing and humming, and smiled at me and said, Christmas is coming. <laughs> time of year when we are reminded to count our blessings and it's a really important time of year because it reminds us of the incredible importance of gratitude. The Hebrew term for gratitude is a which means literally recognizing the good. So we practice gratitude by recognizing the good in every situation you know, the good that is already yours and recognizing it in the present and in every situation. It's a spiritual law, and it's one of our most powerful spiritual laws that what we put our attention to grows. You've heard that a thousand times. But how often do we forget to do that? So when we are in gratitude, we are putting our intention on that which is good and that which is beginning to grow then and begins to you know, flourish. It's like when being in gratitude, you know when you feel really grateful about something, you create an energy, an energy vibration. And that energy vibration then becomes part of what you are. And that attracts more of that energy. Energy is attracted to energy. So when we're feeling grateful, we truly do create an energy focus of our lives, and it attracts more of that goodness to us. Your state of being, your consciousness, determines all that you will attract. We know that. I mean, you know that is the law of attraction, right? So when we move into gratitude, it helps us to really feel that and create that energy vibration and bring it to us. 
Now, conversely, when you choose to fight or resist whatever is happening, in that moment you create resistance, which is a disharmonious vibration. Now, how do we fight or resist? I don't like this, this is not good, I don't want this in my life, this is horrible, and so on, we go on and on and on that way. Well, that's fighting, that's resisting. So we create that type of energy, and then what happens? We attract more of that type of energy. So the focus on whatever we are, whatever we are focusing on, we attract more of. And that's why we always say that what you resist persists. Exactly. Because whatever we are focusing on, whatever energy we are creating, so when we create a positive energy through gratitude, we begin to attract more positive things in our life. It's a really powerful spiritual practice. If you are ever in a state of being where you're not feeling very good, either about yourself or about what's going on in your life, um, if you're feeling you want to change something, maybe you're angry, you're resentful, you're feeling hostile, you're disappointed, you're sad, and you want to change how you are feeling. Move into gratitude. What can I be saying? Right now, it could be you're, you're thankful for being alive, you're thankful for breathing, you're thankful for so many things, and the minute you shift to what you are grateful for, you will, you will shift out of those negative feelings. It's just a natural flow of what tends to happen. So the interesting thing is we count our blessings, we actually begin to create our blessing. For as you experience gratitude and you count the many wonderful things in your life and you focus on that, by creating that energy, you attract more to it and you are therefore creating more of your blessings. So there's several points about this that I, that I want to share with you and hopefully you can begin to use and practice in this uh, absolutely incredible holiday. When we're creating our blessings, we oftentimes can look for opportunities. So when you are grateful, okay, sometimes you can be grateful for the opportunities that may be coming my way. Now we know, you know, we know, a collective we, that from a quantum physics level, there are infinite possibilities that are always unfolding for us. So when we move into a state of gratitude, we begin to attract those opportunities <coughs> that are of the same vibration that we are creating. So if we create a really positive vibration, all kinds of wonderful opportunities will come our way. If we're creating a very negative vibration, what tends to happen? Lots of opportunities for the not so good things tend to come our way, right? So if we can open up to knowing that at whatever state we are in, we are not only being in that state, we're creating that which is unfolding in our world. So it's not always a case of is the glass half full or half empty. You know, sometimes you can say we can look at it as half full or half empty. It can be totally empty, but if you open up to opportunities and focus on what is positive, you will bring those opportunities forward and you fill the whole glass up, regardless of whether it's half full or half empty. The point is, how do we move into feeling grateful for whatever that may be and create those opportunities? Uh, <clears throat> and more often than not, whatever comes forth, if we can be grateful for that, okay, however we may judge that opportunity, Whatever it is, we can be grateful for it. We might, therefore, begin to attract something very positive and wonderful out of it. There's a story about two men, uh, both Italian sculptors and contemporaries, uh, Donatello and Michelangelo. Well, one day Donatello received this great big thing of marble. Not an easy thing to do in those days. I mean, they didn't have forklifts and all those kinds of other things, whatever. So they delivered this huge thing of marble. And Donatello had ordered it. He looked at it and said, 
I don't want this. It's got a crack in it. It's not pure. It's not clean. Whatever. This will be terrible to work with. I don't want it. I don't want it. Well, these you know, poor delivery men had moved this huge thing such a long way, so they decided, well, let's just go down the street and give it to Michelangelo. <laughs> so they went down the street and they delivered it to Michelangelo. Said, you know, we got this big old piece of marble here. We think it's great. Would you like it? And he looked at it and said, yeah. He said, I see it's got a crack in it. They said, yeah, we know. And he said, ah, but this could be a real challenge. This is an opportunity for me to use my skills. Okay. An opportunity to use my skills. And out of that great piece of marble, he created exactly. the famous statue of David. So sometimes we get life. You know, we get these big pieces of marble in our lives and it cracks in them. It's an opportunity for what we can do with them. What can we do? How can we use our skills to create something? And when we approach it, is this is an opportunity for me in a positive way, what happens? We create a positive vibration and thus begin to attract more positive things into our lives. It is a principle, a spiritual law that we work with in new thought and it works every time, okay? So that's why we are invited to do that, to move into gratitude. It's a powerful thing to do. It's another little story that I love. On display at the French Academy of Sciences is a shoemaker's awl. Do you know what an awl is? It's, you know, the point of these things and they used to, use to put the holes in the shoes and stuff. It looks ordinary, but behind the little awl are both tragedy and victory. It fell one day from the shoemaker's table and put out the eye of his nine-year-old son. Within weeks, the child was blind in both eyes and had to attend a special school for the sightless. At that time, the blind would read by using large carved wooden blocks that were clumsy and awkward to handle. The shoemaker's son, when he grew up, devised a new reading system of punch dots on paper. And to do this, Louis Braille used the same awl that had blinded him. Sometimes tragedy, when we look at it, is there an opportunity that can do something wonderful, not only for yourself, but for others, where we step into our greatness understanding more about who we are. So that first point is always be looking for the opportunities. And what might I do with this? Even though it's cracked, even though it seems tragic, there is an opportunity there in how may I use it to bring forth my greatness and the greatness of others. The second point I would like to tell you about is that in first um, the second Come help me. Thessalonians. See, I just said help you and help me and it came. Thessalonians. It says uh, in chapter 5, first, or in all things, in all things give thanks. It's a very important phrase. You hear that frequently, but the thing to remember is that it's in all things, not for all things. Okay? We often say, well, what are you grateful for? And if something, if you're grateful for something, that means it's already there in your life, right? It's all, it's all oh, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for that, and so on. We focus on those good things. In all things means regardless of what is going on in this situation, <coughs> be grateful. Okay? So that even though you might be in the midst of something that is dis pleasant or not very pleasant for you and you don't like it and it's creating some concern for you, some worry for you, some sadness or even some tragedy. In all things, be grateful. It's a hard thing to do sometimes. I remember I saw an Oprah show, Michael Beckwith was on there, 
those of you who don't know, Michael Beckwith is a very, you know, well-known New Thought person. He has Agape out in California, one of the largest New Thought churches in the world. And he's on Oprah, and they're talking about, he's saying, in all things, be grateful. And so, Oprah says, well, sometimes that can be rather difficult. He says, it doesn't matter. In all things, be grateful. So she brings up probably the, <laughs> the absolute most difficult situation she could find. is a woman who is extremely ill, and she's on a ventilator in the hospital. She can't talk. She's in a tent. You know, she's on a ventilator. She's on a death row, so to speak. And this young woman, as best that she can, says, what? The big challenge to Michael Beckwith. And he says, well, number one, if I were you, I'd be grateful for electricity. <laughs> it's running the machine that's keeping you alive. Right? I'd be grateful for the nurses who are coming around and keeping all of your liquids there that are available for you to keep you alive. I'd be grateful for the fact that, you know, you are, are alive, that you are breathing, that there is an opportunity for some healing to take place. Now imagine if she moves into a state of gratitude and starts to change that vibration rather than, oh my God, what was me? This is the worst thing that ever happened. Da -da -da, I'm dying. Da -da -da -da. You know what happens then. It just gets worse and worse and you create that negative vibration. What if she started to be grateful for this and grateful for that? And what happens is that there's then a healing vibration that starts to move forward, a good vibration was to say what may come forth for her. In all things, in all things, be grateful. Now that's not easy, but that is a spiritual practice that if we begin to really use it, can make marvelous differences in our lives. <clears throat> Another little story. Somerset Maugham, the English writer, once wrote a story about a janitor in St. Peter's Church in London. Have you heard that? You heard it? Okay, it's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> one day a young vicar discovered that the janitor was illiterate, and he fired him. You can't have an illiterate janitor. Well, jobless, the man invested his meager savings in a tiny tobacco shop where he prospered, and then he bought another, and then he expanded, and he bought another. And he ended up with a chain of tobacco stores all over the city worth several hundred thousand dollars. One day the man's banker said, you know, you've done incredibly well for an illiterate man. Imagine what you could do if you could read and write. And he says, well, I'd be the janitor of St. Peter's Church. <laughs> Sometimes what we, what we think is the worst thing in the world, okay, if we open up to the possibility that there's an opportunity here and we can focus on it and look for the opportunities, amazing things can begin to happen and our life can change in a really, really positive way. So it's in all things, be grateful. And that's whether you are, you know, whether you're ill, whether you have just lost a job, no matter what it may be, these, these examples are here to help you understand that as you create that positive energy within you, begin to attract and build powerful, wonderful things in your life. Number three, the point I want to make is be grateful in advance. Okay? In other words, be grateful for that which is to come. All right, well, that's um, a new one, right? Sometimes we think, well, I'm grateful for, and we look at everything that's happened in our present or our past. I'm going to invite you to be grateful for what has yet to, to come forth. Because as you move into that, it takes faith to be grateful for what is coming versus what is here, right? Okay, so whatever it is you desire in your life, be grateful for it, and just know that it's coming forth into your present day. It's going to, it's going to, you, if you become a magnet, that's the law of attraction, that's how it works. So being grateful in advance for that which you want 
is powerful. And the classic example of that is Myrtle Fillmore. Myrtle Fillmore, one of the founders of Unity, co-founder of Unity. She regained her health with gratitude. Every day, she was told she had a terminal condition, but every day she was blessing and thanking every organ in her body that it worked in harmony and health and perfection, encouraging it to come forth into new life. So, you know, who doesn't need encouragement sometimes and, and praise and you know, oh, come on, you know, you're, you're wonderful, you're great. Well, so do our cells in our body, okay? So with this, what she did, she said, thank you, body. How often when we are sick or we are ill, do we think to say, thank you, body? It seems like an oxymoron to us, but that is the power of the law of attraction. That is the power of the law of being in gratitude, that what we draw to us is that in accordance with the vibration that we are creating. So in all things, be grateful, and also be grateful for that which is yet to come. So if you're looking for health and wholeness and vibrancy, if you're looking for prosperity, give thanks for that prosperity. Be grateful for that as it moves through it. It, it enables us to really create a new vibration and a new sense in others and ourselves. And finally, my fourth point is <clears throat> thank others as well as thanking God or thanking, you know, the universe or spirit. Thank other people. You know what it's like when someone says thank you to you? And then when you say thank you to someone else, you start to create a positive energy and a vibration. And by thanking other people for what they are doing, we begin to move into that place of being. So being grateful and thanking. It's also a positive thing to give your gratitude a voice. Just to speak it out loud. Thank you, God. Okay? Uh, and thank you, my dear friend, and thank you, um, these lovely people. I mean, thank you. Just say it and say it. The more you can move into a state of gratitude, the more you are actually doing something very positive for yourself, as well as for the other person. So <clears throat> I'm inviting you to truly, this, this season, this week, during our whole Thanksgiving holiday, which is one of the most, I think, spectacular holidays of the year because we're reminded to be grateful. I want you to truly practice being grateful. And how we do that is you're going to look for opportunities in all things that happen. In all things, you are going to be grateful. So no matter what may happen, you may drop the turkey on the floor. <laughs> and you can say to yourself, even in this, I am grateful. <laughs> now, I'm not grateful for the fact that the turkey's sitting on the floor. I am in a state of gratitude. In this situation, I am grateful. At least it's not me on the floor, right? I mean, you know, there's all kinds of ways of looking at this in such a way that you can begin to feel that and create that. And the third thing is giving thanks in advance. Give thanks right now for a beautiful, lovely, Day of Thanksgiving with family and with friends. So we give thanks in advance, and that creates a faith, that creates a knowing, that creates an attraction. I am grateful for this, and then boom, it has to come forth in order to fulfill that vibration. It's powerful. And then finally, speak it out loud. On this Thanksgiving day, Talk about what you are grateful for, but also be grateful to all those around you. What do you appreciate in people? What can you say to others that I really like and appreciate about you? Give your gratitude a voice. It is powerful. I would like to close with an invitation to God's table of grace. 
peace be unto thee. Enter and be not afraid. I have left the gate open, and thou art welcome to my house. There is room in my house for all. I have swept the hearth and lighted the fire. The room is warm and cheerful, and you will find comfort. Come rest within. The table is laid, and the fruits of life are spread before thee. The wine is here also. It sparkles in the light. I have set a chair for you where the sunbeams dance through the shade. Sit and rest and refresh your soul. Eat of the fruit and drink of the wine. Turn over your troubles and worries to me for the day. Ease your mind and allow it to play. Come, stay a while. Your presence gladdens my heart. All, all is yours and you are most welcome.